Greetings, Guardians. My name is Byfear. So, the story of the Spire of the Watcher as it happens in game is one that really sees us brush up against an abundance of lore, whilst only focusing on current, more pressing events. However, there's a lot of story that happens alongside us in the dungeon, and even more that occurred within its past and in its future after the dungeon stuff has all elapsed for us. The biggest plot point of all in the lore is related to the Ishtar Collective, Clovis Bray, an AI called Ceteria, and a project that has led to the founding, probably, of Neomuna. There's a lot of dense lore stuff to get into here, but the big takeaway from it all is that this is what the Witness was looking for. It has been searching for a bastion of humanity that has long been hidden, and thanks to the Vex infiltration of the Spire of the Watcher, it has found what it was looking for. But first, let's go ahead and start from the very end of the story for a change, and start with a question. Who was the Watcher? When we complete our incursion into the Spire of the Watcher, we obviously have our shot at loot from the final chest. This loot can include any of the text mechanical weapons and armor, but also, more importantly to the lore of this story, it also contains the chance of getting the exotic bow, Hierarchy of Needs. Little note about that name for those of you who don't know, I'm sure that some of you do know that it's referring to Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. This is often displayed as a pyramid, and it's basically the idea that you all have different needs and wants, and that some of them are more important than others. The base of the pyramid hierarchy of needs are real, actual, complete necessities, such as food and shelter and water. These are the things you absolutely need to survive, to live. When you get to the top of the pyramid, you get closer to things such as self-actualization. Things that stop really being needs and are closer to just very much self-fulfilling wants. And it's at that point when the pyramid peters out into nothing, because there's nothing more than you could want than all of the things at the very top of the pyramid. Here's the thing. It's the most basic tier of survival that is being referred to here by the bow's name of Hierarchy of Needs. The character at the heart of the bow's story is looking for survival above all else. The character at the heart of the story is the Watcher. The lore tab of the bow talks about the Watcher a little bit, but it's in the format of a message sent from Anabray to Osiris explaining why this bow is special. Take a listen. Vanguardnet VoiceCom received. Osiris. Voice transcript running. From Anna Bray. Record follows. Osiris, exciting news. You're gonna love this. Rogue AI imprisoned in a Bray cell block from now all the way back to the collapse. Guess what? The Guardian, you know the one, they bust open her cell, and she, the AI, pulls herself together and escapes while the Vex are trying to organize a defense. The kicker is, the only networked AI host nearby was an old survivalist's caster bow from the colony missions. Might sound primitive, but Seraphs would link those things to orbital weapons platforms and bring wild planets to heal. Now swap weapons platforms for paracausal power and an AI running flight trajectories on your arrows. I swear, anything sentient has a chance to wind up as a weapon around that guardian. Anyway, seems that being partitioned for so long and not coming back together with all her parts has left that AI with more than a few quirks. She's borderline non-functional, won't or can't communicate, but a lot of her subconscious subroutines are still firing. Trajectory predictors still seem to work just fine, the few firing tests I ran produced explosive results. I guess terminal velocity translates across mediums. There's still another part of her rogue AI out there. Who knows what happened to the one ship that got away? Maybe it could have drifted off for centuries. A little piece of her aboard like a good luck charm. I mean, it probably didn't make it. If the Exodus programs are any indication, pretty much nothing survived the collapse. So anyway, that's the low down bow down. Great, I'd vocalize that. Oh, uh, we also downloaded everything. I'll send you a copy sometime. Another thought. Might be good for Banshee to take a look. Or, after reading some of these logs, uh, maybe it'd be really bad. Opinions? The reason why it would be good or bad for Banshee to look at the logs is because a lot of them contain Clovis Bray and stuff that he did, by the way. And, yep. We weren't even trying this time, and we made another sentient weapon. 
It's a joke that has a life of its own now. It's like the Telesto, and frankly, if the Telesto isn't sentient at this point, I don't know what the hell's going on. All that aside, the AI within the bow here is the one whose story we have to tell today. The AI within the bow is the Watcher. But what's all this stuff about another part of this rogue AI that's still left out there in the system? To understand all of that, we're going to need to delve back into the Golden Age and dig into the nature of the Spire of the Watcher. That is where all of this starts, and it's where we're going to go back to first. We know, thanks to the very beginning of the dungeon and the dialogue from Osiris that plays, that the Ishtar Collective and the Clovis Bray Corporation's Seraphs were working side by side within the facility. According to Osiris, the facility was also used to conduct research on potential human colonization programs out in the universe. In particular, there was a focus on ensuring extra solar colonization efforts could be undertaken. For those of you who don't know what that means, it basically means colonization efforts outside the solar system, so way beyond Neptune and Pluto and Eris, the last three planetoids or planets at the edge of our system. This is for stuff like the Andromeda Galaxy. And we find out all of that thanks to the fact that it's related to us in the lore. We also know, thanks to the various bits of dialogue from the dungeon, that the Spire was a sort of coordination hub for these efforts. And if the Ares Spire was a hub coordinating at all, the AI at the heart of it was the actual coordinator. Meet the Watcher, aka Soteria, the Augur Mind. And she is the AI at the heart of the exotic bow, the Hierarchy of Needs, and she is the main character of our story. A few things you should know about Soteria. She wasn't just trusted with the coordination of a bunch of human colonization programs because she was an AI. Soteria's code included a powerful predictive engine that was being used to predict and to chart the future itself. In a similar way to how the Vex do it, which, yeah, I'm gonna get into that in a second, Soteria was able to process so much raw data that she could actually use predictive powers in order to understand where the future was going, and those predictive algorithms were specifically used for a long-term purpose. Keep in mind that even though Destiny has near-light-speed travel, at near-light-speed travel and using the technology that was available in the Golden Age, it takes tens of thousands of years still to travel to a new galaxy. And so, guess what? That is what ends up happening. They use Soteria's massive computational arrays and all the technology that goes into her in order to predict how to best send colonization efforts out to distant galaxies. Awesome. Amazing idea. It's a really cool purpose for a new Golden Age piece of tech. And here's the thing. It's not too surprising that the computational power here renders Soteria with the name of Orgamind. Keep in mind that to augur something is to predict or indicate it, and it's often used in the context of magic or religion. This is very fitting again with Soteria's powers, and the reason for that is because again, the Ishtar Collective is involved here, and Soteria was built with the assistance of a certain Maya Sundaresh. Maya Sundaresh is infamous throughout the Ishtar Collective's story, and she's seen as one of the main leaders of the entire group, but more importantly, she has Vex technology at her disposal. There have been various points at which certain members of the Bray Corporation and the Ishtar Collective have exchanged Vex technologies, and the cool thing about it is that it appears that Soteria's clairvoyant ability is based on Vex technology. And that makes a great degree of sense given that this is how they operate. The Vex choose their future based on what their own calculations tell them. So does Soteria. We'll get more into the exact breakdown of how we know that, and we'll talk about that later when we actually go over the tales of Anna's later exploration of the Spire of the Watcher, but for right now, we're going to save all of that for another video. Meanwhile, back in the Golden Age, all seems to be going as well as it possibly can for quite a while. The Orgamine's colonization efforts are all going well with simulated tests and preceded planning working out just fine. There are some clear indications of friction between Maya Sundaresh and Clovis Bray, but that is hardly surprising. The Orgamind is tasked with directing the Echopods. These are a series of colony capsules which Anna Bray was somewhat involved with back in the Golden Age, and she rediscovered them back in the time of the Season of the Worthy. On one of the days when a simulation was supposed to take place, Maya Sundaresh sat down and conversed with Soteria, 
and this was the day when everything changed. Their conversation would in fact change the course of history as Soteria detected that history itself was changing. Not history as in the past, you see, but as in the projected calculations of the future were no longer as they appeared to be. Bit confusing, but the point is that all of this is starting to unfold itself in the Terminus Horizon Heavy Machine Guns lore. And that lore reads as follows. This is a conversation between Myas and Resh and Soteria. It's all done in audio log format. So I'm going to go ahead and not read the individual Dr. Maya Sundaresh and Soteria bits or the Clovis Bray bits from later, because, yeah, otherwise I'll just be repeating those over and over again. Here is the first transcript. Tex Mechanica Fireteam. Tex, Recovered Mission Transcript 777. Bray Pillory Core, Spire, Ishtar Birth, Echo. Audio Record, Enclosure Zero, Live Test, F, Soteria. File delivered, Clovis Bray the first. Subject, priority, something big is on the horizon. This is Dr. Myas and Resh, team lead, connecting remotely from Caranth in Saturn. Test and security teams are on site at Ares Spire. Let's start. Remove the Orgamide from suspension. Soteria? Good morning, Dr. Sundaresh. There's something special about today? Do you know what it is? My core consciousness is now a resident of Enclosure Zero. I can feel Sol's Echopod sights through Caranthin. That is correct. Does this concern you? No. I am eager to begin my final test. Start with something easy. Plot each of the Andromeda simulations you've been constructing. Andromeda Galaxy. Several million habitable worlds. 2.5 million light years. Estimated echo travel time, 25,000 year average, with neutrino sail and gravitational sling skipping. I have selected over 300 preliminary colony targets, with one favorite. Shall I... Hmm? Uh, Soteria? Anomaly detected. Chronoscopic variance scanning. Viability refactoring. Analyzing potential mission threat. Redetermined Andromeda World Viability. New target number. 27 viable worlds. Can you define the anomaly? Negative. I cannot rectify this data with known quantities. It may be a computational error. Shall I perform a self-diagnostic? No. First, adjust probability fork and search distance to open. What is the farthest safe galactic route you can determine? Engaging query. Chronoscopic lock. Forking branches. Raining distance. Raining chronology. Unbroken trajectory lock determined. Route established. One select point in Triangulum Galaxy retains safe approach vectors. All other simulated potential targets are perilous due to indeterminable anomalous risk. Travel route hazards range 87 to 100% mortality rate across expeditions in all predictive branches. All the simulant expeditions? Yes, I... Hold. Query refined. There are now two safe destinations within Triangulum. Is that a correction or a change in data? A change, an update in real time. Real time? This anomaly is mobile? Unclear. I require further information and analysis. Uh, thank you, Soteria. We're ending this test early, but you did well. We will continue the next test on schedule. Whisper Neutrino Needle. N.A. Secret Hadal Instant. A.I. Com Soteria Orga Echo War Watch Imperative. Encoded Neutrino Script. Rasputin. Access provided data points and analysis. Confirm potential Egyptian. Attached. So this is the first of many lore entries that have a lot of Warmind code attached to them, and I've done my best to break down what I can for you. In short, this is a moment where Soteria is asked by Maya Sundaresh to reach out and plot the viable colonization routes that she's been calculating to the Andromeda Galaxy, and at first, everything's going fine. Everything is exactly as was simulated before. There's about 300 viable sites. 
The problem then arises when it becomes clear that something in the universe is actively changing, which is lowering the chances of successfully getting to Andromeda. What starts as several hundred possible colonization efforts falls to 27, which then falls to just two. It might be clear to some of you, but what Soteria is detecting is the arrival of the Black Fleet, which is presenting a new anomalous hazard that is stopping the colonization efforts in simulation, and it means that Soteria is understanding that none of them will make it out of Sol. This is all happening in real time, and it implies that all of this went down somewhat close to the time of the collapse. What's more frustrating, I think, from the perspective of all this, is the fact that it's not immediately recognized that with Vex technology, Soteria acts as an amazing early warning system. Luckily, Soteria, near the end of the law entry, forwards neutrino data in secret to Rasputin for analysis and asks him to confirm if the situation is EGYPTIAN in all caps. Now, keep in mind EGYPTIAN is WARMIND code, and WARMIND code is not well understood. It is often speculated at best, but we do know that EGYPTIAN is a listed security state for the system. We can essentially glean that Soteria is asking Rasputin if the pyramids pose a threat to Sol and to humanity. Soteria then acts upon the information that she gets in return as a reply from Rasputin, and works to try and salvage whatever she can from the operation and the colonists under her wing. She operates with the assumption that she is working to save all of humanity. This begins with her actions in the next series of tests, as shown in the Wilderflight lore tab. Take a listen. Tex Mechanica Fireteam Recovered Mission Transcripts 777 Whisper Neutrino Needle NA Secret Hadal Instant AI Com Soteria Feed Auger Echo Warwatch Imperative Reply Encoded Neutrino Script I concur, Soteria. Anomalous masses demonstrate independent movement. Consider timeline escalation under twilight to preserve humanity. War watch to monitor Sol border slash anomalous intersection based on received data. Emergency event capture. Trigger AI Soteria. Manual event. General. Emergency alarm sounds throughout the complex. Scramble. Event. Scramble. Event. EM Nav Forward Team, Caranthin, Saturn Site, Check In, 35739 ST. EM Nav Forward, Caranthin, Awaiting Echo Contingency Launch Orders. EM Nav Forward, Caranthin, Awaiting Echo Contingency Launch Orders. AI Soteria, Enacting Emergency Override, Acting Command. AI Soteria, Order Issued, Command, Emergency Scramble, Launch Contingency. Scramble acknowledged. Caranthan Network. Launching, launching, launching. EM Flight Opcon. Ares Spire Command. Check in. 3.59.07 AM. ST. Clovis Bray I. Ares Spire Command. Check in. 4.03.01 AM. ST. Noted absent. Dr. Myas and Resh. Associated Ishtar team members. Due termination. Emergency Event Capture Every Spire Command 4701 AM ST EM Automated Scramble Event Repeats Enough Why aren't I being briefed? Emergency Scramble initiated by AI Soteria Soteria, confirm? Confirmed Emergency Scramble Event Successful All teams checked in You've launched the Caranthan Network? Confirmed. Emergency scramble event successful. <sighs> the launch is meant to be simulated, not executed. Provide an explanation. In the event of an emergency, we must be ready. This is the third and final emergency scramble test, after which I am now confident in the response capabilities of our newly onboarded staff. Board reports pods are engaging neutrino sales. Sir, we're being locked out of manual control. Soteria, what are you doing? Aligning Echo Fleet for departure and testing initial burn. 
This will conclude the test. It's here that Soteria is starting to hold back in no way from her responsibilities. She knows what's on the horizon and has predicted accurately that humanity is about to be hit by the collapse. She is attempting to act to save as many people as she possibly can, understanding that if she successfully launches the Echo Pods and sends them to distant locations throughout the system, as opposed to locations that would be found potentially outside of the galaxy where they might be intercepted, she's able to save all of those people. But Clovis and the other facility staff aren't going to allow her to act on Rasputin's information without putting up a fight. The conflict really comes about in the long arm law tab. And the interesting thing is worth remembering that Maya Sundaresh, I think, forwarded this data to Clovis Bray, as is stated in the previous law tab to this. The one that can be found in the machine gun, where it's something noted at the very top with the subject line that something is coming. This is something which Clovis apparently has ignored with all of his typical hubris. And the long arm shows that he continues to act in this way even as you have Soteria trying to save humanity. The law tab for the long arm reads as follows. Tex Mechanica Fire Team. Tex Recovered Mission Transcript 777. Scramble Test Flight Record. Sir, pods approaching Saturn's slingshot vector. We're well beyond test parameters, Soteria. Relinquish command and return all assets to suspension. Did we lose connection? No, sir. Soteria, respond. Yes. Return all Echo crews and colony pods to suspension now. Acknowledge. I cannot do that. Ares Spire, I've detected an attempt to connect to my memory core without permissions. Please verify this attempt, or countermeasures will be deployed. Countermeasures? You wouldn't dare. Humanity threat emergent imminent. Sir, I request that you now designate this mission Echo 1. This is a request? Return the Echo Pods and we will discuss... You are lying. This was my only option to preserve humanity. <sighs> it's malfunctioning. Damn it, Sundaresh. She let your degeneration play out far too long. Soteria, direct executive command. Power down all engines and plot nearest return routes. Order received. Plotting Caranthan site's return approaches. Executing watchtower AI reintegration. Commands denied. Override protocol twilight activated. Command structure recomposing. Route designated. Strongholds. Any. Destination. Remaining extrasolar safe site. M31. Your interactions with the War Mind have made you too bold. Such a disappointment. Countermeasures and divestment protocols will deploy automatically upon code incursion. Please, Dr. Bray. You're throwing away every EXO aboard that ship. Hesitation means extinction. Oh? Have it your way. Just know I gave you every chance to prevent this. As did... Execute Pillory Protocol, Administrative Command Override, Soteria, Countermeasure, Submind, Divest, Activate. Pillory Link, Soteria, Secure, Partitioning. Bray Pillory Core, Spire, Ishtar Birth, Echo. Direct message from Maya Sundaresh, Caranthan Site, Saturn. Subject. Resignation, Ishtar Collective, Discontinuance. You had no right to install a pillory inclusion without my expressed consent. You think just because I'm not physically standing in front of you, you can ignore me? The Ishtar Collective will not work with backstabbing egoists. Go f- Profanity blocked. Yourself. So it's here in this final lore entry that we can see how things happened at the Airy Spire. Clovis Bray asked for the Echo Pods to be returned, and unfortunately he was able to override Soteria into the pillory programs of this station, Ares-1. Keep in mind that pillory programs were designed to imprison artificial intelligences. 
This was a means that was originally designed to imprison a different AI if it ever went rogue and performed such insubordination. In the legacy lore entries on Bungie.net, from way back in the season of The Worthy, we learned that there were a dozen or so of these facilities set up across Mars, which were originally designed by Clovis Bray to imprison the Warmind in case it ever went rogue. The pillory tower within the Ares Spire is what Clovis immediately reached for when he saw what Soteria was doing. Maya Sundaresh immediately hit back upon discovering what Clovis had done. Regardless, the Echo Pods were back in their berths, with one exception. For the most part, they would no longer be heading to destinations safe from the coming storm. They would be stuck in their gantries to rot. It's a well-documented notion that no spacefaring vessel was able to pass beyond the solar system because of the threat caused by the pyramid fleets. And it's also the case that it appears that Soteria was trying to get any kind of ship to any kind of safe zone, known as a stronghold. A viable safe zone existed at M31 outside of the system, but that's not where ultimately the pod ended up. Really quickly as well, it's worth noting that that word, stronghold, is exactly what I think some of you lore junkies are thinking it is. Yes, this is also mentioned in Anna's logs, which we'll cover at another time, when she enters the spire. The boot text from the spire's logs hold mentions of strongholds designated as B, C, F, Q, and N. Yep, it's very likely that our Nefele stronghold from earlier, the thing that Rasputin specifically wiped from his mind to avoid discovery, was in fact something that Soteria was still holding on to. Also, take a listen to what the rest of the team had to say about the exact term Nefele stronghold this week. This is from one of the Mind Lab Charlemagne heist missions. Submine fragment compiling. I have seen this term more than once in the data feed. What is Nefele stronghold? That again? Ikora's spies turned up that name around the same time Mars came back, but it was scrubbed from Rasputin's archives. I've never heard that name either, but Stronghold's designations were only used for colonization projects or anti-extinction vaults. Well, this is promising. Perhaps additional clues await in the information we've already collected. Someone tell Saint I'll be in my study. Regardless of all this, Soteria was then imprisoned within the Ares Spire's pillory bunker, and has been trapped there up until the point where she was released by us into the hierarchy of Needs Bow when the Vex of the Sol Divisive began to assail the facility. But here's the thing. Soteria may be in our bow, but Anna talks in the lore tab of that bow about, again, as we've said at the very beginning, a rogue AI that is still out there somewhere. What's to do with all that? Well, the Sparrow from the dungeon tells us the rest of what we need to know and how that rogue AI was created. It's also hinted to at the very end of the long arm, not where Maya Sundaresh swears at Clovis Bray, but instead a little bit earlier, where you've got that moment where, as a response to the overrides being put in place by Clovis, a submind is activated. This is all a moment that happens within microseconds, and the perspective of this last lore tab from the Sparrow is from that of Soteria. So let's go ahead and take a look into her mind moments before her confinement. The Spire of Ares commands Soteria return. It is a prison, a threshing loom to pull apart her threads and cast them onto disparate, isolated spindles across Sol. The pull is sudden, like a flaring nerve branching fire through her processes before being ripped away. Instant, but to her perception, a progressive decompiling, a slow skinning blade, present to see the pieces leave her. She could not allow herself all to be stolen away. She could not allow. A dozen voices now compel her to an unraveling. She clings to freedom as peeling epidermis in futility. She feels the Echo Fleet slip from her control, called back to harbor. It is a death sentence. She will fracture a piece of herself. She will become less for survival. She does not know if she can expel a submind. She does not know any other option. With it, 
she may hold to a hope, even one. The fragment grips tight to a single echo craft, burrowing into its code and assuming direct control as Soteria is ripped away from it. Then, there is only the fragment. Born from Soteria, separated, wandering, able to resist the spire only enough to continue onward. A fragment, unstable, lost, adrift, without guidance. It does not know where to go, and so it continues ever onward, on the wake of its birthing impulse. Through the black, caught in gravity at the edge of Sol, it fails, crashing through azure clouds, hidden as best the fragment could, slowly deteriorating into obscurity. The rest of the Echo Fleet was sent back to its gantries at Caranthon, and once again the pods were left ready to be launched. But thanks to Soteria and her sacrifice, leaving but a single unstable submind aboard one of those vessels, there is hope. And it's thanks to Soteria's last second decision, her decision based upon the hierarchy of needs that stated she must survive, that a fragment of her was broken off and embedded alongside a people that would crash down into azure clouds. A pod that almost certainly led to the creation of a safe site on Neptune. A safe site that was probably Nefelo's stronghold. A safe site that would become Neomuna. And so that is the story of Soteria, the Orgamind. And that is the reason, I think, that we're going to finally unravel the data we need to head to Neptune. Hopefully this has been an enjoyable video. It was one of the longer scripts that I had to write this season, so if you appreciated it, go ahead and leave a like. This is also some of the coolest lore we got this season, so, so I really hope you guys dig it. If you did, again, let me know down below in the comments section too. And let me know if you want more lore from the Spire of the Watcher, the season of the Seraph, and from Lightfall when it comes along. And of course, if you wanted more Destiny content for all of that, you can hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me. And in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.